Michelle, thank you for being here with us uh, at the University of Novi Sad in, in uh, Serbia. And uh, for years we recognized that we are not so big country and uh, we actually our academic uh, community is not so large. So we have to follow the, the rules uh, created by the big universities and uh, countries and so on. But anyhow, we wanted to contribute to the truth about what we are following. Mm -hmm. We have to follow, we will follow, but uh, we have to know what we are following. So the story is about uh, university rankings. Uh, whenever we are in uh, at a media or when somebody publish a new list of universities, mm -hmm. it appears somehow that media is very interested in uh, where is our university, where is University of Belgrade, Kragujevac, Niš and so on. But we want to, to, to speak about uh, is there only truth in that story or not so? Because we want to know that, we will follow, but we want to know that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question and first of all it's been wonderful being here at, at Novi Sad. Um, and I think rankings, how I got interested in rankings is uh, I work at the University of British Columbia, which is a top ranked institution. And so every meeting started with we're up in the rankings. And so I started to, I'd clap and then say, okay, I'm an academic. I need to know what I'm clapping for. I need to start doing some research in this. Um, and I realized some real problems. One, that rankings aren't uh, about research. They're media products and they sell media, right? And and that, that, that the, you know, so the rankings, when we talk about universities, um, often, you know, they're, they're that the number uh, between a, a ranking of number 25 and 26 might be really small, but it can have a significant influence on that university. Um, so I think that rankings, the problem with rankings, and I'm talking about the global university rankings, particularly what's called the big three, the ARWU, the Times Higher Education, and the QS, is they're taking universities with diverse missions and throwing them all together and ranking them. And so, I started off at a small college in, in Canada, really good college, focus on teaching. Later on I went to another university, eventually I did my PhD at University of Toronto. One university wasn't better than the other, they were different. So Red Deer, where I started, was really, really good for teaching. They didn't offer a PhD, but they were really good at teaching. When I started teaching at, at University of British Columbia, one of the first things I was told was, focus less on teaching, focus less on your students, you need to focus on research and publications, right? And so, and UBC is a very good university, but is it the best at everything? No, it depends what a person wants. Um, and so that's where I think rankings are, are problematic, the ones that are used. Uh, and also, what worries me about rankings is I think it's narrowing knowledge. And so as academics, we're supposed to be about expanding knowledge and about having conversations with each other and introducing each other to new ways of thinking. But what rankings look at is only research in English. They look mainly at, at, at journal articles, uh, less at, at books. Um, and they're looking often at entrepreneurial fields, which are important, but there's other fields that are important as well. And so um, I think rankings are looking at education as just an economic good. I think education is also a public good. And it's looking at how do we prepare people to be good citizens to be part of democracy um, and rankings don't look at those things. So you could have a really highly ranked university uh, but it, it may be that they're investing in companies that are really problematic in terms of human rights or they're not looking at any of those issues. So I think we have to look more holistically. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the, the problem about research and education. Thanks to the research, uh, universities are highly ranked. But what about education? Because we are sending uh, uh, kids to, to study at the best university to have best teachers, not the best researchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, if you look at things like the ARWU ranking, they look at the number of Nobel Prize winners yeah. on faculty or alumni. But those Nobel Prize winners, and they're expensive for a university to, to acquire, um, most likely aren't going to be teaching, mm -hmm. right? And so, so we have to look at that, and that's where is looking at the values and beliefs. Um, what do we see as a good Northwell education? And what, what do we see as a good education for an undergrad? And is getting that Nobel Prize winner gonna help facilitate that, right? Um, maybe it will uh, in, in, in a research area. Maybe it's really a good idea for a university to bring in that Nobel Prize winner because they're trying to develop in that research area. But if they're focused on teaching, um, 
and, and they bring that person in, they're spending money on that one person that they maybe could hire four or five or more um, assistant or associate professors that are teaching and doing research, doing both. And so I think it really is about priorities. Um, and I also think the ranking game is, it, it, many uni universities are spending a lot of money and reallocating their resources to try and get up in the rankings. So where are they reallocating those resources from? Right, so, so you know, at UBC, again, a very good university, but I also have students that are thinking of dropping out because they can't afford the tuition, right, or that are in poverty. So again, what, you know, are we reallocating resources to get up in the rankings, and is that actually benefiting students? Uh, so I think those are things that we have to look at. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a very interesting standing point, because we didn't have that in, in, uh, in uh, Serbia in, uh, in the recent years. And uh, we're thinking all the time about, I mentioned in the beginning, is it everything honest with, uh, with the rankings? So can you yeah. mention some of, uh, of uh, uh, usual frauds or is yeah. something that universities are use, using for, for a better position on the, on the lists? Yeah, that's a really important point. Uh, there's a, a journalist for the New York Times that's written some important articles on this, Frank Bruni is his name. Um, and he's, you know, looked at things like um, universities sending applications out to students they know they're not going to accept, but it gets the selectivity indicator up. So rejecting more students makes a university look more elite. Um, or ways of calculating how much money is spent on students or the, t the ratio, um, the student-teacher ratio. A lot of those things can be played with, right? Um, and, and then also some of the things that, that uh, oh, rankings don't count. So for example, how does a university deal with violence on campus mm -hmm. um, or discrimination, racism on campus? Those things aren't counted. Some argue that actually universities are almost incentivized to suppress those things rather than deal with them because mm -hmm. so much is on reputation, but reputation is different than what's actually happening in an institution, right? And so. I think that's important to look at. But that's that's a huge risk for them because uh, uh, one day it may appear that uh, one accident in a campus will uh, decrease the interest for the university seriously. Well, it's an interesting thing though in terms of what gets more media. And so the rankings get a lot of media and the rankings don't include things like how a university deals with assaults or, or how a university um, deals with inequality on campus. Do you think that uh, it's an uh, improvement in, in university rankings, not university, but, but uh, field rankings, because nowadays we are uh, seeing more uh, uh, lists uh, with uh, different fields from different universities, just because the universities are not the same. So yeah. they're comparing field of uh, food production department, agriculture department, computer science department, so computer sciences and so on. So it's a field studies, comparing field studies instead of all universities. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. One of the examples um, I'll give in the talk uh, this afternoon is uh, the University of McGill in, in Canada. And they um, were ranked number two, their medical school, uh, by one of the rankings, Times Higher Ed and ranked in the top 40 uh, in, in the world, and this is just the medical school. At the same time they had such a high ranking, they were under probation by the Canadian Medical Education Society. Or, um, so, so here you have rank, the rankers ranking them really high based on number of publications, right, and the, the amount of money they bring in uh, for research. Um, but then you have actual people in the field Right, that's the difference. The rankers aren't people in the field. Um, people in the field, medical researchers saying, okay, this school of medicine has some issues they need to deal with, including lack of supervision for medical residents. So there were some pretty, yeah, pretty serious issues. I mean, they, they are off probation. But just the difference between here's people in the field, right, saying there's issues here, and then you have rankers who have their, 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 their backgrounds not in that area saying, oh, this is a great medical school. Um, you asked about uh, um, ways that the system can be gamed. Another way is, uh, you'll ha there was a university, for example, in Saudi Arabia that went up, I think it was close to 100 places in a year. Now, how is that possible? Places in here. And how was they uh, hired, and they're not the only university, hired researchers that had a high number of citations and said, okay, put our university down as a secondary affiliation and we'll give you a contract. I think it was like 70 thousand American and they just had to put their their name down right so that university went up nothing changed in that Inside, university. Yes. and so I think that's what we have to look at is 
what are we changing? What do and what is what are the needs of the system? So the needs of the system in Serbia may be very different than the needs of the system in the United States. And so following the United States isn't necessarily going to serve the, the needs of the system here. And so I think that's another thing to, to look at. Well, thank you very much for, for sharing this with us. And uh, we are very happy to, to learn about that, even though, as I said in the beginning, that uh, we are aware that we cannot change, but at least we are, we have to know what's going on and uh, that uh, we truly believe that our universities, since they are not so rich, they're uh, honestly uh, positioned on those those uh, lists without those frauds and those things because I cannot recognize any of these things among universities in Serbia. Thank you very much. Thank you.